Hi everybody, this is Brian at 3dmetaltools.com. Um, I'm going to continue into my build with Shield Man. Uh, this is part two. Um, just so you know, I don't know that I will record everything, like the entire process of building this model. Um, partially because, you know, the first of all, it's a pretty complex model. Um, the first video that I did was more than an hour and then that was after I'd already completed the head and portion of this rocket thruster on the back. So I'm on page six, well, I'm almost, I'm on page five of 16. And you know, I, 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 I'll probably have a total of eight hours in this entire model. So whether or not I wanna video all of that and whether or not you guys would be interested in watching all of that, I'm not sure. And then of course I need to do all the editing as well. So I guess what I'm saying here is that the, you know, kind of the point of these videos is to show you my processes and how I use the tools and I hope that the processes are helpful for you as well. Um, but I probably don't need to cover an entire eight hours worth of modeling to accomplish a lot of that. So there may be just some highlights or I may skip some, some portions of this uh, before I get to the final stages of this model. So at this point we have, I like it so far, it's really awesome. There's this helmet, got the chest plate, some kind of, I'm going to say thrusters on the back and I'm still a little concerned about these because they're actually kind of in order to be in the right position, they're bent a little bit. Now, I'm not going to worry about it too much. I've gone ahead in the instructions a little bit. I'm not seeing anything specific about them. So I really think that I did it right, even though I wasn't very confident about it uh, yesterday during this build. So let's move on to um, this portion, which I believe is going to be his neck. No, I'm sorry. Um, waist. It's going to be his waist and coming down to his hips. So um, we have these parts here. So 28, 29, and 30, 31 that are going to be coming together. I'll get my jeweler's block here. Um, and um, 28 and 30. Now it looks like I may have I may have mixed these up because all right uh, 20 I, I have I have these knolling boards and it looked like I got one in the wrong spot. So I need to be very sure that 28, which is very distinct from 30, even though they're the same shape, I'm pretty sure that they're a mirror image of each other. So it looks like I definitely need to be sure on this before I move forward. So the engraved side needs to be up and then that portion needs to fold down. So that to me looks exactly like 28 and that looks correct. And then this looks to me like it is 30 and that is also correct. So the engraved side is up and then fold that tab out, and that's gonna be very important to the build, quite obviously. So, okay, I'm gonna set 30 aside, just so I know darn well that it is 30, and that this, indeed, right here is 28, and then I'll keep rolling along. So, part number 28 is gonna to need to be formed into a cone, and uh, we do offer cone forms. If you haven't seen my video on cone forms, feel free to go to 3dmetaltools.com and have a look. But essentially, I manufacture these out of acrylic. They're acrylic cones, and then there's a, a reference sheet inside. So when I'm taking part number 28, and I wanna make this into a cone, I can take this to the reference sheet and size it up. So I'll set the, 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 the stand aside. It doesn't need to be on camera. But you can see that what I do here is I take, get this reflection out of the way, I take this piece and I'm basically just gonna go around and size it up until I find the right match. In this case, 
looks to me like 64 is a very good match for this cone. So I'll set the reference aside and let's get the 64 degree cone. This is it right here. And then we are just going to form this cone around there. Sorry. I'll take the tab, put it through. I'm going to use chain nose pliers to bring it around. And now, a lot of times I don't want to use chain nose pliers on a form that I know is going to be round or curved to press a tab down, but I will in this case because it's, first of all, it's not that big of an effect of flattening. You know, normally in this situation, I probably want to use round nose pliers to do this. So if I squeeze with round nose pliers, because the round tips are round, I can squeeze as hard as I want and I'm not going to deform a curve. But with chain nose pliers, with the flat surfaces on them, then yes, I can very easily flatten. Now, this is just, I'm just using the tip, it's not a big deal. And I'm gonna follow it up with the, corn, with the cone form again. So even if I did flatten that out a little bit, this cone form will bring that back to shape. And now that is a pretty outstanding looking cone. I'm going to set this aside because I know I'm going to need it for another piece just like it. And now this piece needs to, sorry, I got to get my light situated a little better. This piece, I need to get the tab lined up. So I straighten out the tab. Now I'm folding this down. The craft blade will be helpful for this because I can use it to push. The tab in, and there we go. And now I will bring this around. So I'm gonna do kind of like a compound bend of this to bring it all the way back around. And this time I will use round nose pliers to flatten this because I can't get the cone form back inside here now that I have that top sealed off. So there, it's a very small piece, but let me see if I can do this. There is the result of using the cone form. Now, with these instructions, I need to bend this tab outwards. So there's a tab inside here. I'll do that with the craft knife. And then I will grab flat nose pliers to bend it out, get a good hold of it. And then just simply by pushing firm, the right angle of the face of the, of the flat nose pliers guarantees me that I just made that angle, that bend at a perfect um, 90 degree angle. So that's pretty well set to go. Now that is number 28. And it looks very important that I always remember that that is number 28 because um, number 30 is actually a different uh, piece. So let me have a look here. It's going to mate with this. The non-engraved side is outward, right? Just taking a look here to make sure that I know what I'm doing. Okay, so the non-engraved side which is this, even though it has texture, it's actually this side. And I'm going to be attaching this portion to it. So I will go to my chain nose pliers and I will flatten out or straighten out these tabs so that they can go into a, um, into a, this portion, sorry.
so that looks accurate to me but I don't want to lock this down yet just in case now I'm going to get so I'm just going to leave that right there and not touch it because I need to be very very sure that I've done this correctly as I look at this piece you know it um, I know I know this is number 30 and I know that I did the engraved side on the outside but this doesn't seem to align perfectly a straight up and down the way that it should now as I look forward in the model I know that what this is is this attachment right here so even if I have this off or even if the instructions are a little bit off I can still find a way to make that attachment right here work so I'm not going to be that concerned with whether or not see my concern I guess is that in this configuration this tab is actually facing inward a little bit and not facing straight up and down like the instructions say and I know that I have it in the right spot so that could be a little conundrum not sure anyways let's get to work on this cone I'm going to do the exact same thing as before so I've got the 64 degree cone knowing that this lines up with the reference sheet perfectly for it and bend this around I won't use the round nose pliers yet straighten it out with the cone and I can probably set this back in the in the stand because I don't know that I'm going to need it again straighten out this tab and then I'm going to bend this portion down to meet make sure that's snug and I think we're good bend this around and then round those pliers so that I can get a good grasp on this without deforming the cone that I made I'm going to bend this tab outwards carefully. And one thing about X-Acto knives or craft knives, I always recommend that you dull any craft knife that you're going to use for this because it's real easy to cut yourself. And there's nothing that we do with building 3D metal models where we really need to cut anything. The most critical part of this craft knife is just the tip because I can use the tip to dig into things and hang on to them you know I can push a tab into place I can also reach very very tight crevices I can use it to lift tabs that I have folded that maybe I shouldn't have folded um, uh, and you don't need the knife to be sharp to accomplish that so I recommend dulling your um, exacto knife or craft knife So now this is going to mount onto here. I should have straightened out this tab first, but I can get it now. There. And I still didn't lock that other one in yet, but it looks to me like I'm doing this right because I know that this is going to... See, my concern right now is that these tabs that I folded outward with the craft knife are both this one is facing in this direction this one is facing in that direction but the instructions show them facing straight up and down however I am going to bend this into a cone form so I think that by the time I think the instructions may not be accurate with that by the way that it looks here as long as they give me a good surface after I bend this part which is part number 29 into a cone then I'm in good shape and like I said all that I need is an attachment point for um, these hoses and I'm sure that I can improvise that if I have to so I feel comfor comfortable enough to go ahead and take these parts and I'm going to go ahead and flatten their tabs chain those pliers 
Remember, one of the big advantage of the chain nose pliers is that I can grab, and then by rolling, I'm pulling at the same time. I'm using it as a fulcrum to pull the piece tight. So I'm getting it close to where I want it to be. And then I can take something, I like to use a jeweler's anvil. Um, I can take this now and then just press it against this end of the anvil and it will flatten these tabs very effectively. I don't like to use pliers to do that, to do, to do this flattening portion because it's real easy to just crush things and uh, if you get that flattened nicely it's not going to go anywhere anyways. So there we go, we have this piece in place and where it should be. So now at this point it looks like we're going to attach piece number 31 which has a couple of bends and then it looks like we are basically going to make this into another cone. So this will be the, the upper waist or the kind of like the stomach of the, of the shield man. Um, so let me get part number 31. This bend is going to be much easier if I use flat nose pliers. So flat nose pliers and it doesn't look to me like it should be a right angle but I can tell beforehand by just matching this up. So if it lays, if, if the slots align with what I'm doing here, then it should be a 90 degree angle. And it looks like actually it should. So if I'm, if I'm off, I'm not gonna be off by very much. So I'm gonna take flat nose pliers. The reason that I use flat nose pliers in this situation is because I can take it, bend it against the face, and I know for sure that's a 90 degree bend. If I were using chain nose pliers or needle nose pliers or anything with a round face, you know, you could do it, uh, but uh, I, I prefer to just have this precision. I mean, I, I guess if you're so picky about details that you're actually building these 3D metal models, then you might as well take the detail all the way. And for me, that means using pliers that will make it a lot easier for me to make a perfect 90 degree bend, and in this case it's flat nose pliers. Um, and I was right, it is supposed to be a 90 degree bend, and I was just about perfect, but it didn't want to fall in on its own. So now that this piece is in, I feel comfortable enough to go ahead and, again, using this as leverage, I can just bend these down slightly. And now in this case, I don't really need to use the anvil to press these flat. I can use the jeweler's block and it'll accomplish the same thing. I would only just suggest that you're careful. I don't want to push hard here in the center or else I'm gonna bend that portion in and this won't look three-dimensional anymore. And I'll also do this, <laughs> see, I just about cut myself there. That's why you, you, dull, your <laughs> you dull your craft blades. Um, I just poked myself though. It wouldn't have been a major deal. Although it would have made for a great video. All right, so that part is in place and looking really good. I, I like it. And now what I'm going to do with this part is fold it around to make a cone shape and back to my cone forms. This is the reference sheet that goes into the stand. And I, even though there's not enough, like normally on my work reference, I like to use these large ones just because I have lots of space to put them on my re reference boards. But on this, I had to minimize space a little bit, but you can still see if you just essentially take, extend these lines out in your imagination, you can still see exactly which cone form is gonna be best. So 71 is not really a good match. 77 is awfully close. 74 if I extend these lines out, I don't think that 74 is, is the best match. I think that 77 is the best match. So I'm gonna grab my 77 degree cone form here and start bending. Very important at this stage that I flattened those tabs and didn't twist those tabs. If I twisted the tabs, then I wouldn't really be able to press this against the cone form nicely to get this shape. Now it's still going to be a little complex because I have two portions that are 
attached to this and these things these three portions won't want to flatten very well so I'm gonna get this really close I think the way that I would want to do this is I'm going to take these tabs um, on the side so these two tabs on the side and I'm gonna bend them inward so that when you look at this robots or when shield man's waist you're not going to see the tabs they're going to be on the interior so anytime that you have two tabs in a row always bend them at the same time because then you know that they are both going to be uniform when you're trying to fit them in a slot so i grab both of these tabs like this i'm going to bend them inward and now it'll probably benefit me to give it a little bit more curve on this side now i can bring these together and I'm not too concerned about whether or not my cone is a perfect shape right now. I'm more concerned with getting these tabs in here and use, use the chain nose plier as a fulcrum to rotate this way. And rotate this way. So I'm pulling it tight as I'm, as I'm pressing it down. And then I will use round nose pliers to lock these down because I don't want to flatten out this piece. I want it to remain in a cone shape. Now it looks to me like the way that they designed this, there's no way that I can possibly get this to be a perfect fit because I think that you can see that these portions here are flat and they're being mounted onto a round shape. So getting this dead perfect is an impossibility no matter what, but I will still take the cone form and still kind of shape this so that it is optimal. And that's really pretty good. That's pretty round considering my limitations with these parts on the side. Um, and since they seem, they are a little bit wobbly, but there's just no way around that. I can't really get these any, any better. I, I can push a little bit with the cone form here to hopefully flatten out those tabs. But I got a feeling that those are just gonna be fiddly and wobbly no matter what I do. So I'm pretty happy with the way that that waist looks. Let's move on to page six. Um, I like to make it a habit of getting all of my tools. Like when I finish a major step and I'm moving on to a new page or a new spot, or anything, I'm a little bit, um, maybe a little fussy about this, but I like to have most of my tools back in their spots. Um, my, my chain nose pliers are probably the most commonly used tool, so those might stay out pretty often. The jeweler's block might stay out pretty often, but it's my preference to get everything back into its place. Um, that may be me, and I'll admit that it might be a little over the top, but that's just the way that I work. Um, organization is <laughs> very important to me. So, um, let me get back into this. So now we have part number 32, which is this. And it's going to be very important, it looks like, that we have the engraved face up, and we have this arrow pointing down. That seems pretty elementary to me, but they have, the, they have this exclamation point, which tells you to pay special attention. So... I am essentially going to bend this downward, these downward, and then fold it around. So the best way that I can do this is I have cylinder forms here. Um, here is uh, 700 or 17.7 millimeters. And what I can do is take this cylinder form and just put it up next to the curve that I know that I'm going to want to match. So in this case, it looks like I picked just about the right cylinder form because this, the curve of the cylinder form is just about identical to the curve right here. So I think that I can be very confident in going ahead and bending this portion over this cylinder form to make that shape. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. And now it appears to me that all I'm going to do is bend these down. I don't know that pliers are necessary, 
Um, so let me just go ahead and bend this. That's a good fit. That is a good fit. And um, we'll do the same over here. Get these two tabs into place. Now this one fell out. So I think what I will do here, I'm gonna go ahead and get one mounted and locked down. I'm very confident that I have this right and I've done it correctly. I don't need to test fit. So I'm going to do a compound bend, uh, meaning that I'm going to fold it back over itself rather. So in, in other words, what I'm doing is I'm bending it all the way back 180 degrees rather than just flattening it out on the top. If I just flatten it out on the top, um, I think that I really run the risk of it possibly folding out. I mean, if, if you think about it, if you have a tab, you have a choice of either bending it. Uh, I'll zoom out a little bit. If you have a choice of bending a tab at 90 degrees, like this, the odds of that being pulled out are a lot greater than if you took the same tab and instead bent it all the way around this way, 180 degrees. So that is definitely locked in. If I bent it this way and just did 90 degrees, it's not necessarily locked in. Now, is that really gonna make a huge difference in the end? Um, probably not, but I, would much rather know for sure that all my tabs are very secure and I like to lock them down with pliers anytime that I get that I get a chance so those are in place these ones I can use I'm just going to use my chain nose pliers to push this tab in place fold it around again I'm doing a 180 degree bend instead of 90 degree bend because it uh, will be a more lasting joint, I guess, is how I would say it. There we go. Same thing with this. Bring it around, flatten it out. Using chain nose pliers to do that is debatable in my mind because I am using a flat faced plier on a curved surface, but this curve is very gentle. It's really not a very severe angle. But now that I do have it in place, I'm gonna grab my round nose pliers and start manipulating this curve a little bit because it's not a perfect shape in my mind. And I'd like to get it to be a little bit better. Again, round nose pliers, the jaws are round. They're conical um, and circular. So you can grab anything that is curved and not, you can tighten the tire, uh, the, the tighten the pliers and not have any real risk of anything going wrong. Now one thing that I noticed about this that I'm not real ecstatic with is it's just the nature of this bend means that this is actually kind of a dent right on this corner or on the on this edge rather than a perfect bend. And this is also kind of like a dent. So I'm gonna grab my jeweler's block and a cone form, uh, sorry, a cylinder form. I'm gonna get one that's a little bit more narrow. This one is half an inch. And I'm just going to basically kind of act like a blacksmith and I'm not gonna pound on it, but I'm just going to take this piece and push hard on the jeweler's block and that should flatten this out. It did a decent job but that still is not, I'm not sure that I will ever be able to get that super crisp without literally hammering on it. And I don't know that I want to do that. Um, I've never been one to, I mean, a lot of the stuff that we do here with these 3D metal models are very reminiscent of what a blacksmith would do, you know, uh, hammering steel on an anvil. That's why we literally do have little mini anvils, little jeweler's anvils but I've never gotten into where I felt like I needed to actually hammer on something. So it's not perfect. That is a little bit of a dent, but I will live with it. I think it looks pretty sharp either way. So now I know that this is critical because this needs to be the front. This needs to be, so the arrows, these, these two V's are here. This is going to be locked into place accordingly. These tabs likely will need to be straightened out so that they're pointing straight down or so that they're pointing straight to the ground. Just a little tiny bend. 
and uh, let me look and make sure I'm doing this right before I lock anything in. Good. So this goes here. Got the other tab in. Looks like I have all three in there. And then of course there's no problem with twisting these, I'm sure. It does say that I can twist them. Um, always make up your own decision as to whether or not you want to twist the tab or fold the tab. Usually twisting is easier to do, but folding can be more attractive. And in this case, this is going to be inside the model, so twisting is perfectly fine. I grabbed my my long chain nose pliers to get these tabs in here because they're very, very close to the edge, and I need something with smaller tips. So these chain nose pliers, the long chain nose pliers, have very, very small tips, and I can reach into some very confined spaces with these. Um, if you're looking at Tronics pliers, chain nose pliers, and you're deciding, and the, the ch chain nose pliers are the most common tool that I use. If you're deciding, I mean, Tronics tools, of course, the imported tools are fine. They, they'll work perfectly fine. Now, you won't find any that have these tip sizes that I'm aware of anyways, uh, that have these little teeny tiny tips. But if you're on a budget um, and you're going to buy one before the other, I would recommend the long chain nose pliers because they will do pretty much everything that the short chain nose pliers will do but they do have a very small tip, which is easier to get into spaces. Where the short chain nose pliers work better is just general purpose, and because they're very short, you have a lot more leverage at the tip. Because these are longer, you're gonna have less force when you push this down. So there's upsides and downsides to both of them, but the long chain nose pliers are the ones that I would say buy first, because they'll have the most utility for you if you're only going to buy one pair. That would be my advice. So I have those in place now and they look pretty nice. Now I'm on to adding this part number 33, which is right here. Looks like they're telling me to pay special attention that the V's are going forward and I can do that of course. So this looks very straightforward. Uh, there's going to be three tabs. I'm sure that I need to get these to be perpendicular to the ground, so I'm going to bend them s slightly upwards. And that's a perfect fit. I will give you a tip, though, um, and that involves... Lock, locking forceps. One thing that can be difficult about an assembly like this, I got the shape pretty darn accurate to where I didn't really have to fuss with this at all, okay? But one thing that can be difficult when you're building these models is you can, let's say that, let's say that there were five tabs on this piece that had to attach here. Uh, they probably wouldn't engineer it that way, but if it was a much bigger one, then sure, you might have five tabs or six tabs. Well, what happens when you get tab number one in place, number two in place, number three in place, maybe even number four, and then number one slips out? Well, then you're chasing your tail, you know, so you get number five back in, and then number two pops out, and, and it's, it's really frustrating. By using, I won't need to in this situation, but it is, uh, you know, I'm sure that I'll run into other situations and I'll show them online. What you can do with locking forceps like this is you can get, I won't be necessary to do this, but I'll still demonstrate it. You can get tab number, let's say this first tab in place, and then take the locking forceps and lock it on that tab. And then the locking forceps are very light, so they're not going to be, you know, you can, you can just have them hanging off of here as you're doing something else. Then you get number two in, if you, if you want, you know, I have a second pair, this one is actually curved, then the locking forcep can go on to number two. Then I can make sure, so that, that way I know that tab number one, and if I want to add another one to tab number two, is not going to go anywhere. They're not going to move at all because I've got them completely locked in. So then I can get the others into place. Um, without chasing my tail because tab number one will remain exactly where it is and there's no reason that I can't twist this so I'm going to go ahead and give that a twist unlock the forceps and now I know that I have um, 
you know, number, I didn't need to use the forceps, I'm just giving you a demonstration. There's other much more complex situations where you have multiple tabs going into one hole and chasing your tail is no fun. Uh, the locking forceps make that much, much, much easier. They're very inexpensive tools and I highly recommend that everybody has a pair of those. They're very useful for, for that. Not only that, but they can, you know, if you don't want to invest in like a Tronix needle nose pliers, these are going to reach into about the same spots. Now the size of the tips are very, very different. You know, the, the tips on the Tronix pliers are a lot smaller. You'll get into some tighter, tighter spaces. But for the money, you know, it's hard to beat these. Um, these are excellent, excellent tools that I don't think a lot of people think about or consider when they're doing 3D metal modeling. So that is in place. And now, wow, it looks like we're going to get to a pretty cool spot in this build. So it looks like I'm now attaching, basically, the torso to the waist. This looks pretty straightforward. It says that I can twist the tabs, and hmm, I'm debating if I should. Maybe I should. Uh, I'm looking at this portion right here. So the the, the torso is being placed onto here. Um, looks like that's pretty straightforward, and that's pretty straightforward. So I don't think that I have any real complications going on with this. So let me go ahead and um, Remember that my preference is if I'm if I'm going to bend two tabs in the same direction to mate with the same part, I would like to do those tabs at the same time with flat nose pliers. And the reason is because when I do this, I know for sure that those tabs are exactly in the same plane because they were made with the same set of pliers at the same time. So when I go to line up these tabs to the base, I can be sure that they are both in the same plane. And indeed they are. So right there I got all four of these to fit really well. That's that's pretty cool. This is gonna be a really, really neat model when I'm finished with it, I think. So now, maybe not totally necessary, but I am going to grab my bent nose pliers here. And that way I can get a really firm grip on this part on this tab and twist. Very as difficult to see that, but it's it's not easy to get my pliers in underneath this. So by using the bent nose, I have better access. Not necessary with this one, but handy to use the bent nose. And the same with this one back here. All right, this is looking pretty cool. This guy is going to be awesome. Shield man, I like. I like how I think it must be just like a Chinese translation because they didn't get very creative with the name for this guy. It's just good old Shield Man. Um, I'll probably take a break here and um, decide, um, you know, when I will pick up with the next step, whether or not I'll keep videotaping or whether or not I'll keep recording on video or not. I'm not sure, but uh, it's probably a good spot for a break, anyways. So. Um, keep your eye out for part three, and I'll continue uh, building Shield Man. <laughs>